Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another episode of our RimWorld totally vanilla let's play slash maybe tutorial <laughs> that we've got going on over here. We've got no mods, no expansions, and I am trying to explain uh, things in a beginner friendly way as we go. We've got a new bed set up over here. We'll be able to move Palo to that. In fact, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go and deconstruct that sleep spot. And Palo is still in a prisoner room, but uh, there you go, yeah. So Palo is still assigned there. He's still hurt, so he wants to lie down in bed, so he's going to go and do that immediately. But now at least he's not sleeping on the floor. That is an improvement. Uh, we don't have a roof over our new stockpile yet, but that is happening now. And we needed a lot more space to store things, so I'm happy that we've got that going on. We're going to have to expand our uh, freezer relatively soon as well, because we've got some potatoes. Boil them, mash them, put them in a stew, uh, ready to be stored up. And there's a little bit of room in here, but not much. And um, our excess food will get stored in our stockpile, but this is not refrigerated, so eventually it will rot and spoil. So we're clearly going to need a little bit more of that. But RimWorld is a game of constant expansion, really. And it actually wouldn't be very hard for us to go and expand this room as is anyway, even without changing anything about our, um, our little stone workers room. But maybe I will do that, actually deconstruct this and then I'm gonna go and ask for a little bit of mining to be done over here you know we will we'll make some more changes later on but for now this is gonna be okay we'll just expand our freezer and have some more cooking space once fob the builder is up and ready to work again that is and then after that yeah my goal I want to get my bedrooms going so that we don't have the shared barracks it's gonna make everyone a lot happier as we continue to expand the low expectations is going to start going away and people are going to get upset already. There's a minor break risk. Fob over here might have a break because they're really unhappy. Lots of modifiers. Eight without a table. There's a table here. Oh, it might have been in a prisoner room for a little bit or some sort of depth ring. Or maybe everyone ate at the same time. So there wasn't actually enough room for Fob to eat at the time. Um, usually they're not going to be in sync. And two chairs is going to be plenty for four people. But we might want to go and make it a little bit more. If nothing else, it'll feel good. We've got a long way to go before we finish researching microelectronics. But it's going to be very useful once we get there. I guess I did research machining and then actually put down a machining table yet. Um, I may have researched it sooner than I needed to. Let's. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna construct it. I'm gonna keep this going on for now. There we go. We've expanded our freezer area. Now, if this gets too big, and depending on the ambient air temperature and all kinds of various um, uh, just variables that are going around, um, one of these coolers may not be enough to keep your freezer frozen. So you'll want to evaluate the temperature of your freezer from time to time, see if you might need to add a second cooler to the array. But for now, we're okay. I'm just gonna expand the storage zone. Not through the wall there, but I'll do that. Oh, it did get split because of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the existing part because it wasn't actually able to expand, that's okay. I'm just gonna make sure to copy the settings from this and paste it over here, just to make sure that um, all of these have the same setting. But now we've got room for more food in our freezer. I'm also gonna click on all these marble chunks and ask for someone to eventually haul them over to here, just because if they're there, we're not gonna be able to store food in this area. There we go, that's starting to happen. Lovely. I want to make sure if we do get a big food harvest, we've got that. Because the store is open, our wildlife can venture in and out of um, from the larger map and might actually be sitting here eating our potatoes. Well, what we don't want to do is build a little fence around here to prevent that from being an issue. Or what I could do is I could build a fence over here so that wildlife can't actually enter into this area. Maybe I'll just do that. I'm just going to build a fence like so. We'll put a fence gate over here. And maybe what I'll do, all these deer, I'm going to mark them to be hunted. There we are. Perfect. I don't know if the rats eat those crops, too. I might, we might hunt the rat. I don't know if anyone really wants a rat burger, but uh, we'll see. Ooh, this gunfire is pretty loud. But we did need some more food soon, too, and we've got a whole other mouth to feed. So I think we're not going to mind getting the extra meat, plus more leather. We can start working on our clothing soon. In fact, I think I could build a tailoring bench. Can I not? Yes. Let me build an electric tailoring bench, and I think I'm going to tuck it in here. It's going to be a little cramped. We'll try to make some more room for people uh, soon if we can. Oh, oh, this battery. See, this battery broke down. So in RimWorld from time to time, anything electronic will occasionally randomly break down. Your builder will have to come over and replace the broken component. This will consume one of our components, which is very annoying. But we clearly need this battery to be operational. And unfortunately, the wind's not blowing very much right now. So we're still going to have these power brownouts. 
Hopefully we can get a nice breeze soon. After microelectronics, I might want to research solar panels. I don't think I have solar panels yet, right? No. We could build a wood power generator just to fill in the gap, but I personally, I, I personally don't use them very often. A lot of people use them a lot. The fact that I ignore the wood generators doesn't mean they're bad. It's my personal play style is all. A lot of people use them to massive, massive extent. I think part of it for me is in really old RimWorld. I don't think the wood generators existed or maybe had to be researched. I'm not sure. Gosh, this uh, we really need some wind. Oh, there we go. It's kicking up a little bit. There we are. Things are going to turn back on and our battery's starting to charge again. Okay. I think we do need another wind turbine soon. I think uh, the wind has to be blowing at least half strength, maybe, maybe a little less than half to be breaking even on power but it wouldn't be a bad idea to get maybe a second wind turbine and then a second battery relatively soon. Now this room here is quite dark, which does make people a little bit unhappy when they're in it, although they shouldn't be in it a very long time. It also makes them move kind of slowly, which isn't a huge deal, but it looks kind of dumb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some power over here. And even though it's gonna use an extra 30 watts of power, I think these lamps used to use, I think they used to use more. I think they used to use 100 watts, but I guess they have gone from incandescent to LEDs. I'm going to put a standing lamp in there. This will be one space that can't be used as a stockpile, but it's just going to look nicer to have a light in there. I think this is probably a waste, but I like it. One of the uh, things that some people might ask, ask about is the width of hallways. How wide should you leave your gaps between buildings and whatever? Or if you're, let's say you're living inside of a mountainside, how wide should you carve out your hallways? Um, one tile wide will lead to people kind of bumping into each other a fair bit and will slow them down. So you really want to leave at least two. There's also a really interesting argument to be made about a three tile wide gap. And the reason for that is, let me just pause and do a little example here. If we had a hallway that was three tiles wide, what we could have for our doorways, we could do this. And then if we get attacked, we can have one person stand here, one person stand here and use it for cover to fire through the doorway that way. So um, a three tile wide hallway can provide a better defensive kind of structure because if it's only a two tile wide, then you end up like this. You could put one person here, but not two. Um, and also then like, you only have one door. Well, that looks kind of silly. Maybe use double doors. I tend to like to do this. I like to do double wide hallways and then put a double door like this at the end because I think it looks cool. It's not better, but I think it looks cool. And that's really what it comes down to. So, you know, develop your own building style, uh, you know, eschew square buildings if you want, you know, do things that are much more interestingly shaped. I'm just going for a very, very simple little setup over here right now. Uh, but it, depending on how you're playing RimWorld, you might be playing on high difficulties and then, yeah, you need just efficiency and simplicity because you're just tra trying to desperately stay alive. Or maybe you were playing more for aesthetics and things and you've been, you might have installed a bunch of cosmetic mods, for example. Okay, that, uh, that rat's uh, pretty tough to kill. I suppose as long as we shoot it out of here. I think the rat can go through the fence because it's so small. I'm going to cancel that. I usually don't hunt rats because... Um, uh, and squirrels and rabbits and things because they can got, kind of be a pain to kill sometimes and they're not worth much meat but i mostly wanted to get them out of here hey we have our little baby coo oh how cute i'm, I'm thinking about taming the alpacas oh they're all male hmm that's not that useful then now i'm thinking about just hunting the uh, alpacas but we do have a thousand units of raw food right now see fob is in a bad mood so it says the final straw was awful barracks. Um, so it picked one of their bad mood things. I think it might pick the, the one with the biggest negative number and it blames that. But really it's a combination of everything. He was just below the threat. Sorry, she was just below the threshold for the mood break when it happened. That is kind of disappointing. Uh, oh, well, but yeah. So see, now Fob isn't gonna do anything for a while until she's done her sad wander. Also, we got a random event here, a psychic loan, or psychic drone. Psychic drones um, either affect males or females, it's random, and can come in low, medium, high, or maybe even very high degrees. And this will give everyone of that gender a mood debuff. So right here, see, see this is a low psychic drone, minus 12, low. This is why we want excess of happy thoughts to prevent these problems. So yeah, now all of a sudden it's like, oh man, if only I'd had individual bedrooms, FOB would have been fine. They wouldn't have the awful barracks modifier. Ugh, what a pain in the butt. All right, well, maybe we want to start looking at something 
you know, to, to fix that. So what are we going to do? Well, let's assume this is going to turn into maybe a little dining room. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some bedrooms and how big do you make your bedrooms? Well, so there are different sizes that affect the, the space for things. Uh, you can see these barracks are considered to be rather tight. This actually calculates how many empty squares are in an area. So you can have two rooms that are the same size. If one of them is cramped with furniture, it will be considered to be a fairly tight room and not as enjoyable. Um, on the other hand, it will have more valuable value from sort of wealth and beauty and things, in which case it might balance out in a different direction. Um, I, I tend to build sort of uh, maybe five by five rooms um, because I, I just feel that that's kind of a, a nice little number. It also works really well if I'm making these 13. So if I'm doing the walls that are 13 to a side and the space internally is 11 to a side, it divides subdivides very nicely into uh, rooms that are five by five internally. So seven by seven, if you're counting the walls, five by five internally. So I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offset them slightly. So I'm going to do this. Um, if I click... Uh, well, maybe it's not in vanilla. I guess it's only with replace mod. Yeah, that I can just drag something and have it mine at the same time. Well, we can leave these walls here. That's going to be okay. And then if I drag this, so if I'm starting from here, I'm going to drag seven. There we go. And do this. This is going to be a space that's going to be five by five interior if I go and mine that out. And then the plan I'm going to have is going to be to build a door there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to drag this out so it's seven. And then it's going to line up to over here. So that's going to be another room. And both of them will be able to access into this dining hall right away. And we'll do something similar over here. I'm going to just switch to my mining tool. And make sure we've got an area that's going to be five by five. That's going to get mined out over here. So what I'm going to end up with, especially like with here, I could even like move a little door there or something. We're going to have four bedrooms that are going to link into maybe a little dining room over here. And then we'll have a separate construction area over there. Or these could all just be, you know, separate bedrooms or something. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But I'm going to go ahead with that. Let me plan on putting a door right there, please. There you go. So mine. Fob is still having her sad wander, unfortunately. So we're not going to be constructing for a bit. Oh, hello, compact and machinery. These will break into more components, which is going to be really great for us. There we are. Oh, there's more over here. We're definitely going to want to mine all those, that's for sure. The bits that are still stone walls over here, I could mine them out and then replace them with wooden walls, or I can just smooth them to make them nice and pretty. For now, I'm just going to leave them there as is, uh, not spend any time smoothing, although certainly that's going to be a goal, I think, just because it's going to be awfully nice. Now, is anyone assigned to wardening? Oh, yes, we have two people set to wardening. Sky's got a skill of eight. Honey's much better at an 11. So actually, I'm going to turn off Sky's wardening because I'm going to have Honey do all the wardening with Paolo. Um, there is a cooldown between interactions that you can have with someone. Sometimes it's good to have multiple people on wardening because it's going to ensure that someone takes care of it the moment it's available. But in this case, I'm going to have the person with the higher skill do it exclusively just to make sure that Honey is always the one using it. On the other hand, Honey's a night owl. I suppose what we could do is we could um see if we could manipulate things so that sky if if honey's alive sky is going to be you know having the chat with paula paulo i don't know you know i'll just leave them both on what the heck there we go whoever gets to him gets to him that's going to be okay please mind that out thank you very much and i'm very happy to be getting some extra components oh fob still sad wandering sometimes they'll wander until they collapse from lack of rest uh usually they, they do break out of it you know at some point uh, that is very disappointing. On the bright side, after they've had a mental break, they will have a plus 40 mood, uh, moodlet for, it's gonna call it catharsis. So they're gonna be in an okay mood for a little while. Prevents people from having mental breaks back to back. You know, generally speaking, unless you stack a lot of negative modifiers. There we go. Fob finally ended it. Now it does say that she's got a major break risk here because when you're asleep, the mood bar doesn't move. So her current mood is sitting here, which is a major break risk area, but this little triangle, this is where her mood actually actually is. Once she wakes up, this bar will slide over to here and then reach it. So Fob is going to be fine once she wakes up. She's going to have a night's sleep after her big sad wander. I get it. I, you know, I have the big sad sometimes. It's fine. Move that rock. I could, if I wanted to square these off, I could go and extend the wall over here, but maybe whoever gets this bedroom will get a little bit more space just by virtue of how this worked out. We might wall it off later if we end up with some hallways over here or something of that nature. Now, one of the things you can do is we toggle on the visibility of roofs. Um, these are all thin roofs, which is good. See these dark spots? These are overhead mountain. Now, you can never remove overhead mountain parts of roofs. 
The other thing is that insect invasions can happen in areas that have the overhead mountain. A base inside of a mountain is great for safety, except when there's an, uh, uh, an insect invasion that happens within the base. Um, an underground base is very, very dangerous and very problematic. Uh, so I just want you to I want to mention that if you're having problems with insects spawning your underground base, that's what's it. So if you turn on the roof thing, just be careful for the overhead mountain parts. Uh, there we go. Toggle that off. When you make a new game, you can prevent insect invasions by disabling the... Oh! Palo wandered over here because temporarily this was a prisoner room. When when this wall is taken down, but before the door was there. I think the same thing might happen here. This might temporarily become a prisoner space. But that's going to be okay. <laughs> no one can get in here until that happens. There we go. Now, you can prevent areas that have the mountain overhead. You can just fill back in with some structure uh, if you're worried about bugs spawning there. Which we'll probably do because at some point we're going to want to mine that. And we're going to want to mine more of the steel as well. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is. Okay, door's coming up. That's great. Ah, there it is. See this? Just very temporarily, until Fob rebuilds this, this is all prisoner space, so no one's got a bed right now. But that's okay. Uh, it, first of all, as soon as this goes up, this will go back to normal. We might have to set it back to, to, um, to colonists, actually, manually, but we'll see. But I'm going to move these beds into these rooms so we get individual bedrooms now. So I'm going to just go ahead and move you here. Move you here. Reinstall you, say, over here. Okay. And then we'll leave one in here so it's its own bedroom. There you go. Doors up. And you see these are all still flagged for as prisoner beds. So I'm just going to select all these and put them back as colonist beds over here. Okay. Now these are crummy bedrooms, but we will have individual bedrooms now. And especially, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this wooden door. Can I just put a wall over it? No. I'm going to remove this door and build a wall there to prevent people from walking through. Whoever gets this bedroom, I don't want people to walk through their bedroom. I'm gonna move these uh, end tables. Oh, actually that's gonna have to be rotated. When you move, it resets the rotation here. There you go. So we're gonna have end tables next to these beds and I'm going to build a copy over here as well. Hopefully that's rotated the correct way. Eh, maybe I'll leave the door there. I don't. Nope. Never mind. I'm going to get rid of it. I really want to make sure no one walks through someone else's bedroom and disturbs them. After that, I'm going to put some flooring in here so that things look a lot nicer. Hopefully stay a little bit cleaner as well. We'll also maybe have to check on people's cleaning jobs just to make sure everything's okay. All right. Vort's claim this bedroom. Fob is back over here. Skies claim that, which means over here we're going to have Honey's room. And short term, after Paolo joins us, we might just keep this as Paolo's room, although he's going to be very unhappy as people keep walking through it. We're clearly going to have to make a bedroom for Paolo uh, himself. And we might just do something separately over here. So he might not go directly into the dining hall, but that's okay. But it would be nice to have his own bedroom. Or what we could do is we could have one of these rooms double up with a couple of the colonists. They could share some space short term. You know, you've got to make do with whatever material and however much construction time you've got. Okay, we do have a note here. Warm clothes because we are going to have some uh, cold weather. So they're going to need some warm clothes soon. But in general, we're going to want our people to have some decent clothing as well. So we built a tailoring bench. We have to add a bill so that jobs happen over here. We've got a variety of different clothing that we can work on. Uh, there may be technology that will unlock even more clothing that we can make. But for now, here's what we've got. Um, the way clothing works is any piece of clothing. Let's take a look at this button down shirt. It has a certain layer, so the button-down shirt is on the skin layer. This is on the layer that touches their skin, and it covers these body parts over here. So torso, neck, both shoulders, both arms for this long sleeve shirt, right? This is a button-down shirt. It's a long sleeve shirt with a collar. Some people might be in a t-shirt, which wouldn't cover up their arms, for example. Um, if we take a look at these flak pants, so the flak pants actually occupy two layers. They count as both the skin layer and the middle layer. So there's three layers, skin, middle, and outer. So flak pants actually cover two layers over here. Uh, so you can't wear, so if we look at someone who's wearing normal pants, so right here, uh, who's this? Vort with synth thread pants. Synth thread pants just occupy the skin layer. So you can't wear both regular pants and flak pants because they both interact with the skin layer and therefore that's not okay to do it. Some clothing is like full body basically. Um, and yeah, some cover just different bits and pieces depending on what's going on. So. When you're figuring out, you know, what kind of clothing to make, you kind of have to think about the body parts that are going to be covered as well as the layers involved. To stop people from feeling like they're nude, 
is they need to have something that covers their legs, right? They need to have some pants on of some kind. And female pawns, by default, if you have ideology, you can change some of these rules and things like this. But by default, female pawns also want their chest covered. Otherwise, they're going to have um, debuffs from feeling unhappily nude. Unless they're a nudist, in which case they don't want those body parts covered up. So if we'd been able to recruit Kai, then we wanted, we would want to keep those pieces exposed as much as possible. For clothing, so if we're talking about just the tailor, let's ignore the flak pants because we can't actually make flak pants right now. What we're going to do is we're going to assume people are going to need pants to cover their legs. Um, they, we're going to want to make sure they've got something to cover their chest and ideally arms. Like you could build a t-shirt, but a t-shirt covers the torso and the shoulders only. There's no reason, in my opinion, to build t-shirts when you can build button-down shirts. It'll cover the arms as well. Technically, this gives people a little bit more protection and may keep them a little bit warmer in the winter as well. So those are both skin layers. Um, for a middle layer, we will be able to make flak jackets or flak vests, flak vests later on. Um, if we take a look at our research tree over here and we take a look at flak armor, uh, you can see we can make a flak vest as well as a flak jacket. The flak vest, covers the middle layer so they can wear a shirt a flak vest and then still have a jacket a coat on the outside whereas if we check take a look at the flak jacket this is the outer layer so the flak jacket is like a jacket it's a coat um there's no reason generally speaking to have both a flak jacket and a flak vest on the outermost layer of clothing that your pawn is wearing on any particular body part tends to be the thing that absorbs the bulk of the damage so if you have a flak jacket a flak vest is kind of redundant ish combat mechanics and the way damage is applied is a little complicated to say but that that's generally it um i don't tend to give my people flak jackets it does slow them down and mostly i want them to wear dusters and things for temperature control but flak vests which admittedly are less defensive flak vests just cover the torso neck and shoulders whereas the jacket does cover the arms and yeah you can see like so for example the sharp armor which is what's used for um, gunshots as well as knives is 40 percent on a jacket whereas the vest it's actually 100 percent what? Yeah. As it turns out, uh, the flak vest, I mean, this is a proper bulletproof vest as opposed to just sort of a padded jacket over here um, with plates sewn onto it. So anyway, we don't have that tech right now anyway, but when we do, my pawns, generally speaking, what I aim for is regular pants, sometimes flak pants, but at least one or the other, a button down shirt, a flak vest on top of that, and usually a duster on top of that. So a duster over here, it's a long coat, right? Like a trench coat kind of thing. Um, this covers, it's the outer layer. It covers basically every body part except the head, torso, neck, both shoulders, both arms, and both legs. So it's quite long. It covers their lower body. Um, it's got decent temperature control, both for the cold and the heat. It keeps you a little warmer when it's cool, but also protects you from the sun. So insulation cold, this gives you, yeah, this makes it, um, lets you resist cold more. Insulation heat lets you uh, protect against the heat better. Um, so this helps with both ends of the e extreme. If you're in a very, very cold biome, then the duster is not quite going to cut it. You are going to need a parka. So a parka over here uh, doesn't cover the legs and is not very armored. And it does not give you protection against heat at all. In fact, it'll make you, you know, you'll overheat in the parka, but it's much better against the cold. If we had very frigid winters, we'd want parkas. I'm not sure that we're going to need parkas over here. I don't know how cold it's going to get. I think as long as we have dusters and, you know, pants and a shirt, we're going to probably be okay. We also want something on their heads. Um, I, I like cowboy hats because I feel that they're stylish. Take a look at the cowboy hat over here and then click on it. Um, it actually gives you 10% more social impact. It makes you better at social stuff because you look really cool. It's got a little bit of armor for your head as well. Um, it doesn't really give you much cold protection, but it's quite good against the heat because it gives you shade. The other head option early on uh, can be the bowler hat. Now the bowler hat, I think has very similar stats to the cowboy hat, but better social impact. But me, I don't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't look as cool to me. <laughs> So I want cowboy hats because cowboy hats are cooler. You can also wear the toque over here. The toque is uh, a little bit warmer, uh, but again, I like cowboy hats. So sue me. On the other hand, our people already have something on their heads. They have helmets, right? We are currently making steel helmets. 
to protect their noggins, which is going to be better than those. So if I was worried about temperature, I might want to have them wear cowboy hats generally because it would keep them cooler. But in this case, I don't think I'll bother making cowboy hats, even though they're super cool. A helmet's a better idea, I guess. But we've got a few other options available in here for different things. But still, if we're making pants, button down shirts, a duster and a helmet, our people are gonna be in pretty good shape. By default, this does it one time. What I like to do for this is do until you have X. I set this number to one, so you can click one at a time. You can also control click and it adds or removes up to 10. So I usually control click to bring it down to zero and then click it one time. It's the same thing, do until you have X, do until you have X, bring it down to one. And under details here, I don't want it to count equipped. So this is gonna make sure we always have one fresh pair of pants, shirt, and a duster sitting in our stockpile at any given time for someone to put on. I do wanna make sure that we don't look at things that have no hit points because clothing that's below 50% count as tattered and make people unhappy. But not only that, clothing lose a lot of their armor stats as they take damage. So I'm gonna say something like, listen, make sure there's something in our stockpile that's got at least 80% hit points. I might even say something like, only count something that's at least normal quality or better. But I'm, maybe I won't worry about that. I'll say any quality is okay, as long as it's got a decent amount of hit points. You could also limit it to a particular material and only count things that match those materials. Uh, what I may want to do here uh, for some piece of clothing, I might want to prevent the expensive um, materials, Devil Strand, Hyperweave, and Synth Thread from being used for certain things. But in this case, let's not worry about it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to set the same hit point requirement for the shirt. and the duster. This will make sure we always have one relatively new piece of clothing waiting in our stockpile at every given time. Either one of our people will wear it, or if a trader comes by, hey, we can just sell that and make some more. That's gonna be okay. So that's gonna be great. So if someone's clothing gets worn or for some reason they're not wearing something in that slot, if someone's not wearing uh, something in their outer slot, uh, they'll go and grab the duster and put that on. It'll hopefully keep them warm enough through winter. Um, if not, you know, we can consider parkas. If we do click on one of our pawns and hit the I button here, we get lots of different information. There's lots of, lots of info over here. Uh, but what I want to bring attention to right here is the maximum and minimum comfortable temperature. So if it got, so for fob over here, if it's warmer than 29 degrees or colder than six degrees, they would be unhappy. They might overheat, get hyperthermia, or they might get hypothermia or even frostbite. So that's their current temperature range, but that's with Bob or sorry, Fob only wearing a button down shirt and some flak pants. If we give Fob a duster, that range will expand uh, a, a, a little bit, especially on the heat side, but also the cold and hopefully it'll be okay. If it's predicted to reach one degree Celsius, I think we're gonna be fine with just a duster. And there we go. Honey is working on that, making a duster currently. And we're gonna see some people equip themselves relatively soon as these things get made. I do want to give a shout out to tribal wear. So tribal wear is not something you make at the tailoring bench. Uh, oh no, it is there. But if you don't, you, you can save time rather than constructing a tailoring bench under production, you can build a crafting spot. This doesn't need to be built. You just plop it down. Same thing as a butcher spot. It just exists instantly in the crafting spot. You can make a limited number of things, including tribal wear. Now tribal wear deserves an honorable mention because it covers the torso and both legs. Tribal wear is enough to make people not feel naked. It does not use very much material. It doesn't take much time, doesn't take much material, and it's a good way to prevent the nudity debuff. If you're desperate for quickly getting some clothes, if you don't have very much material, because one piece of tribal wear takes less material than a, a full shirt and pants combo, and you don't have to build a tailoring bench to get it done either. But here, you know what? We're gonna be quite civilized. We'll get some proper outfits going on. That's gonna be okay. So Honey wasn't able to construct that much. She did start on the uh, duster sitting over here. I would actually quite like it before we end this video. I'm gonna force, I know Honey, you were trying to sleep. You're a night owl. You're gonna be unhappy with this during the day. I'm gonna force Honey to finish the job of working on the duster. I'm also gonna take a look at Paolo here to see how he's doing. His resistance now to 7.5. We're halfway to convincing him to join our little party here. That's great. Now he does need to be fed, but our warden is responsible for feeding them, feeding them and having conversations with them. All right, honey's just about to finish this duster. They're gonna dump it in the stockpile and someone is gonna go and equip it. Turns out honey went and equipped it right away. Let's take a look at honey's comfort level here. So she is now comfortable all the way down to zero degrees Celsius. So if it goes below freezing, she'll still get chilly. But right now she would actually be 
uh, fine based on the predicted temperature. And even if it goes below zero, she wouldn't start freezing immediately. So there we go. That's that's not bad at all. So again, we might still need a bit more. The other thing we're probably going to want is we're probably going to want some heaters inside of our actual buildings, especially in the bedrooms. People become very unhappy if they slept in the cold. So what we're going to want is before winter comes and, you know, I've heard that winter is coming. Uh, we're going to want to have some heaters in the house. Uh, you don't need one necessarily. You don't need one per room. Um, it'll depend on how cold it is, what the insulation of your base is, the layout, all kinds of different things like that. Oh, that wall has popped open. I need to put a door in there now. Um, so you'll, you'll have to monitor it, see how cold or uh, what it is. But um, most likely here, especially if I'm just concerned about the bedrooms, a couple of heaters is probably enough for the bedrooms as long as we have vents. So vents allow temperature to flow from one room to another. So I'm going to build a vent here, here, and here. Uh, and I guess we need one kind of over here. So now all of these bedrooms have vents, so temperature will flow from one to the other. And I, I suspect very much if we have a heater maybe in this room and over here, that'll probably keep all the bedrooms relatively warm. The one that might have the biggest problem is Vort's room over here because it's right next to the cooler and the temperature does go through the walls. It does leak through the walls a little bit. If Vort's room is always too cold, hey, we could put make sure there's a heater in here, which will compensate. But then the heater and this cooler are sort of going to fight. What you can do is you can build a double wall. A double wall will help insulate things a lot more, and we might consider that here. Vort's room's already, already a little bit bigger because of the way things are carved out. Um, so it might be fine to double wall and have less of an issue with the temperature leaking through. We have a quest to potentially rescue someone. I think we are going to try to do this, but next time. Because this is going to let us show off um, moving on the world map. It's going to show us a little bit different combat, and it will give us a different way to recruit someone. And it's Darcy, it's, uh, Darcy is Vort's sister. We have to go and rescue Darcy. It's Vort's sister. Come on. But that'll have to wait until next time. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.